Happy July 4th. It's Freedom Day and I just felt like getting on my mat and exploring the freedom that I can find in my own body. So I thought I'd jump on here and try out a, uh, a video on Instagram and let you guys join me if you'd like. So let's start in hands and knees. Take a moment to plant your hands mindfully, spread your fingers, lift your feet, and just kind of awaken your feet as you start to move your hips around a little bit. Spread your toes. And just beginning to deepen the breath so you can really connect and feel your body. We'll start to pulse the hips forward to tabletop and back towards the heels, keeping the gaze between the hands and starting to let the breath warm the body just a little bit. So instead of the traditional cat-cow, which may be difficult for some of you that have long spinal fusions or short spinal fusions, we'll just pulse the hips forward and back. Now, as you're doing this, actively press the knees apart from each other and actively squeeze the heels in towards each other like you're squeezing a yoga block between your feet. Keeping the spine in neutral, we start to tone the glutes, we start to feel the legs, we start to stretch a little bit under the armpits, and then we'll come up to all fours to puppy pose. Keep the hips directly over the knees, walk your hands forward to the top edges of your mat, and slowly allow the forehead to come towards the floor. Think long through your side waist as you press the hips back. Deepen your breath and really find an expansion through the tissues of your torso, that central core from the pelvic floor to the crown of the head. Actively press your hands down and forward like you're stretching your mat. Inhale to rise back up. Come to tall kneeling position, hands to waist, and just begin to shift your, hip, uh, shift your weight side to side, lifting one knee in a clamshell-like pattern. So pulsing back to the side and lifting a knee up, starting to just explore a weight shifting side to side. Now even adding to the challenge, you can lift the foot off the floor for a second and try to catch your balance. I really like to do this to explore balancing on one leg with a shorter distance from the floor than if you're standing. It also loads the hip and allows you just to feel where your body is in space, as well as prep you for a functional transitional posture. So on the next round with the right leg lifted, you're gonna lightly tap the right foot forward. Take both hands to the top of the front thigh, tuck the back foot toe under, and come to a low lunge, tipping forward with your torso to keep the spine nice and long. Take a moment to warm up the feet, just moving the heel up, pressing the heel back. Extend your left arm up by your ear, reach like you're gonna handshake someone, and breathe deep. Then lower the back knee down, hands to waist, change sides. Weight shift right, left foot touches forward, nice and slow with control. Hands to the top of the thigh, tuck back foot toe under, tip forward as you lift the back knee up off the floor. Warming up that foot, spreading the toes, rocking on the ball of the feet. The elbows go wide and forward and then reach the right hand forward and pause. Breathe, squeeze your back leg strong, and then this time we're gonna rise up bending the back knee into a modified warrior one. Stretch your arms over your head, anchor the back knee down so the spine is in a nice alignment. Look up gently, inhale, and swan dive arms to side as the back knee comes down and we'll change sides. The right foot steps forward, hand to thigh, lift the back knee, and then bend the back knee down as you lift your arms up and stretch once again. Keep the back knee hovering up off the floor, front knee directly over the ankle, look up, inhale. You're gonna step forward to standing position, pushing off the back foot, and coming to Tadasana Mountain Pose. 
pausing to set your feet mindfully. Parallel your second toes towards each other, so that might be a slight turning inward of the feet. And take a minute just to feel your foundation root down and rise up. Arms to the side, palms open. To take a little bit more space to feel. You know, open your arms to a T, palms up, lifting through the heart, rising up through the belly, and then squeezing the elbows together to just draw the shoulder blades, the bottom tips of the shoulder blades together on the back. Bend your knees for chair pose with the arms straight out in front of you. Sit back like you're sitting into a swing and then slightly hover the heels off the floor. Take three little pulses and then rise back up to stand. Eagle pose for our July 4th. Hands to waist, bend your knees. Try to avoid tucking the tail under, so just bend the knees and let the bottom sit back slightly. Weight shift to your left and slide and glide your right foot around so that your legs are crossed, but the right ball of the foot is on the floor and the heel is low. Bend your knees and sit back. Place your forearms out in front of you at a 90 degree angle. And then stage one, bring your hands together to touch. You can stay right here or you can cross your right elbow under your left and hold the hands. If that's not available for you, just keep the palms together. If you're crossed, pull your elbows forward as you sit back a little deeper and really mindfully press the ball of the right foot down. Take a breath as you lift your elbows forward and up, and then rise up and come back to mountain pose. Changing sides, sit and lower your knees, bend your knees, slide and glide your left foot around. So we're not doing traditional eagle where we try to wrap our foot around, we're just keeping it smaller, keeping it a little more stable. Keep the ball of the left foot on the floor so the knees are crossed sitting back like a chair, chair pose, and then bringing your elbows in front of you, palms together. If your palms are together, bring your elbows more forward and up, or you can cross left under right. Elbows forward up as you sit hips back. Mindfully push the ball of the left foot down and forward. Inhale to rise back up. Please step wide outside your mat space. Turn the feet out just slightly, bend your knees. Slide your hands down your thighs into recovery pose as you sit your hips way back behind you. Keep your spine long. Touch your right hand fingertips down lightly, making sure to sit back as far as you can. If the, hands, if the fingertips don't touch the floor, just hover them and then change sides and continue to change and to change. Sitting as deep as you can, sitting the hips back as far as you can. If you're a little stronger, this is gonna be a nice challenge for the back muscles. Both fingertips towards the floor or to the floor, keeping the chin up and the gaze forward towards the top of your mat. Your legs might be shaking a little bit. Bring your hands to the floor, right knee down, left knee down. First downward facing dog, tuck the toes under, lift the knees up and push the hips back. I like to keep the knees bent and I like to keep moving my sit bones up towards the ceiling. You can shift your weight side to side and just rock it out a little bit. Pressing down strong through the arms, spreading your fingers and really clawing them out with your fingertips. Now bring the knees to the floor Point the toes back and slowly lower yourself down. If you can, tuck your chin to your chest and rest your forehead. S extend the legs back, pointing the toes and begin to roll the shoulders one at a time. Rolling the shoulders onto your back and squeezing your elbows in. If you feel sensation in the upper back, just slow down a little bit and breathe through it. 
push your hands down, push your pubic bone down to the floor, and inhale, just slightly lift the chin, slightly lift the chest. Feel your back body muscles strong, toning, working, and keep working on pulling your shoulders up and down. Lengthening the neck, and tuck the toes under, big push up back to all fours position. Take a seat on your mat. Side sit position. Left shin forward, right tucked back up under you. Find your seat. Flex your front foot, take your fingertips forward and to an angle a little bit towards your left and start to just slightly hinge forward. Not rounding forward, but hinging forward until you feel a slight sensation of a stretch in the left hip. This is kind of an adapted pigeon pose. I like to stay on the fingertips, elbows bent and wide. And with a few breaths, I might be able to move a little deeper. Keeping the front foot flexed and pressing down keeps me active and keeps me from overstretching. And rise up. Change your side sit. Right shin forward, left shin back. Flex and press down through your front foot and fingertips come forward towards the right. And a slight hinging and extending of the torso. Take a few breaths, mindfully pressing down through the right side of your foot till you feel sensation in the right hip of a slight stretch. Take a big breath and exhale. Rise up and come onto your back. Pause to adjust to the new position, feet flat, knees bent. Take your arms, elbows down, fingertips up like, a, like robot arms. And then actively press your elbows and shoulder blades down into the mat, pressing your feet as well as you lift the hips slightly up. Bridge pose. Now, you should be very stable and level in your hips and not a wobbly bridge. If you're wobbling, you need to build strength here, so stay right here. Those of you that are very steady could hold this for a good few minutes. Take your feet a little closer together and bend the right knee into the chest. Begin to bicycle pedal your right foot as you continue to press down your elbows and your shoulder blades evenly. So a few things going on at one time. You should feel, particularly if you're in the one leg version, the left glute and hamstring really firing. Change sides. If you're still holding your regular bridge, just hold there. Left knee lifts and we bicycle pedal. Don't forget about your upper body making contact with the, with the floor. And then come down and slowly lower down. Hug the right knee in towards the chest, extend your left leg long, point and flex your toes a few times. Take a nice cleansing breath. Feeling a little more free and connected in the body with a short practice. It usually takes a bit longer, but for the sake of social media, we'll keep it short. Extending the legs out, arms out wide, Shavasana. Wiggle and jiggle your body. Close your eyes and I invite you to take the next five to seven to 10 minutes if you have the luxury of time to completely relax and allow your body to restore. Thanks for joining me, namaste.